I was thrilled about making a big purchase for the first time in a long while. Then suddenly, my phone rang. It was my credit card company. Um, it appears that your credit limit has been exceeded and you've been trying to make payments several times. Are you sure it's you using it? Confused, I quickly checked my wallet. And there, my credit card was missing. This is serious. Your charges this month have amounted to about $40,000. I started feeling dizzy. It had to be my husband and in-laws. This was beyond forgivable. I reported it to the police. My name is Vicky. I'm 31 years old. I work at an advertising agency. My husband, Harry, is also 31. He works at a food-related company. We met through work last year and hit it off immediately. It was a time when both of us were considering marriage, so things moved quickly from dating to marriage. We plan to continue working even after getting married. How about we set up a joint account for our living expenses and draw from there? A joint account means we can see each other's spending, right? Even for a couple, that's a bit. So what should we do? Let's not do the joint account. Despite both of us working, I'm the head of the family. I'll handle our finances. Vicky, you save. I was concerned about my husband's insistence on not wanting to be monitored on how he spends his money. Actually, after getting married, I began to see his flaws more clearly. His financial sense did not match his income and his parents' condescending attitude towards me. But I kept telling myself that marriage is a long-term journey and bore with it. His sense of money was quite different from mine. My salary was higher than his. I spent a lot of time at work and hardly spent money on socializing or leisure. Meanwhile, my husband had a taste for luxury in everything from hanging out with friends to fashion. The glamour I found attractive in him was based on his spendthrift habits. And his parents were also fond of lavishness. They often went to theaters and trips and loved brand name goods. They ridiculed me, who had no interest in such things. Oh, Vicky dear. Wearing that outfit again? Didn't you wear the same thing last time? Did I? Mom, Vicky has been saying lately, you know, that thing. Minnie, what was it? I'm not a minimalist. Whatever that, is thing is, it doesn't matter. It's just not right for Harry's wife to be dressed like that. Like what? Well, never mind that. More importantly, Vicky, about our upcoming trip to Europe. Europe? Oh yes. It's Europe, so of course, you have to be prepared appropriately. I've got everything from travel bags to shoes, all brand names. Wow, that's impressive. And you know, we were thinking of buying you some brand name goods there too. What would you like? Your thought is enough, thank you. I really can't accept such an expensive gift. Look, Vicky. It's not just any souvenir, it's something we're buying on your behalf. That's right. If you give us about $5,000, we can bring back something nice. No, thank you. I don't need anything. Their spending habits were beyond my comprehension. My husband would proudly talk about his parents' taste for luxury. My parents know what's good. They prefer genuine quality. I was raised that way, so cheap stuff just doesn't do it for me. But that must cost a lot of money, right? Are you sure it's okay? His mother was a homemaker, and his father was working post-retirement. They lived in a rental home, and I couldn't figure out where they got the money for such luxuries. Money. Vicky, you really are stingy. My in-laws and husband shared the same view on money. Three months into our marriage, my husband asked me to cover the living expenses. Actually, things are tight this month. Vicky, could you cover the living expenses? By living expenses, he meant our apartment rent and the high heating bills. With my salary, we could manage the expenses and still save, if we economized. All right. But is it just this month that's tight? Harry, are you sure you're managing okay? Well, not just this month, maybe next month too. What do you mean, next month too? What are you spending so much money on? 
I have to send some money to my parents too. Sending money? Yeah, filial piety is just natural, right? Anyway, I'm counting on you for the living expenses. According to him, he was sending a portion of his salary for filial piety, so he couldn't make ends meet. How much was he sending them? At that time, I didn't press further. Or rather, I didn't want to deal with his parents, so I let him be. Next month, he demanded money for himself on top of the living expenses. My salary isn't stretching far enough. I need some money from you too, Vicky. What? But I've been covering all our living expenses since last month. What are you spending your salary on if it's not enough? That's, well, various things. I can't do anything with such a vague answer. Ah, uh, enough. It's because I'm sending money to my parents. I'm using it for filial duties. I know you send money to your parents, Harry, but it's strange that you can't afford our living expenses. What do you mean, strange? What's wrong with my filial piety? If the money you send is that much out of your salary, then yes, it's strange. Are you saying my filial duties are strange? Is that something you should say to your husband? My parents are your parents too, you know? I'm doing it on your behalf. Harry, please calm down. When it comes to it, you should be willing to contribute too. I was shocked to realize he thought it was only natural to spend money on it. Moreover, somehow I was also supposed to contribute. All right, Harry. I won't comment on your filial duties anymore. But please, make sure it's within the scope of your own salary. I'm saying it's not enough, so you should contribute. Are you even listening? Harry, really, calm down. What kind of filial piety costs so much? How much are you sending? If you're asking me for money, you could at least tell me that. Uh... That's various things. He became flustered when I pressed him about the remittance. I had never seen Harry shout like that before, and it scared me a bit. All right, I'll lend you $1,000. Is that okay? Remember, it's a loan, so you have to pay me back on your next payday. $1,000, okay. Got it, I'll definitely pay you back. After receiving the money, my husband seemed to cheer up. For the moment, I decided to just lend him the money to settle the situation. From that day, my trust in my husband vanished. I was sure Harry would never pay me back. Could we really continue as husband and wife? Just as I suspected, six months had passed and Harry had not contributed to the living expenses, instead, he kept asking me to increase the financial support for his parents' comfort. We fought constantly over this. This way of living started to feel incredibly unfair to me. Moreover, my husband occasionally asked about the balance in my savings account. For self-defense, I began to hide details about my salary and savings from him. Gradually, he grew more irritated that he couldn't draw money from me as he pleased. One day, while I was eating dinner alone, I heard the front door open and thought Harry had returned, but his parents were with him. Welcome back. What's going on? Why are the in-laws with you? My parents have something to talk to you about. Just sit down and listen. I felt a bad premonition due to my husband's domineering attitude. Sorry for disturbing you at night. We thought we should talk to you about the family expenses. Family expenses? Yes, we need financial help from you guys. Showing filial piety requires tangible actions, you know. Why am I included in this? Well, you're married to Harry, so it's natural you contribute together. But we've heard you're hindering his efforts to support us. Isn't that shameful for a daughter-in-law? Can you even call yourself part of the family? My in-laws started to criticize me for blocking their financial aid, branding me as a disgraceful and unreasonable wife. You're refusing to give money for your husband's filial duties? Is that how a wife should act? Harry married such an ungrateful woman? Change your attitude and support Harry properly. I am supporting Harry. I handle all the housework and bear all the living expenses, don't I? Despite both of us working, Harry's load seems lighter, doesn't it? 
I countered my in-law's accusations. Harry frowned and clicked his tongue. His mother, arms crossed, looked down on me and said. I hate to say this, but do you think opposing your husband and having a smooth marriage life are compatible? Then, she continued. Are you okay, with being abandoned by our Harry? We're his parents and thus your parents too, right? Wouldn't you want to help if your parents were in need? Huh? You would, right? Normally. We have various expenses and are struggling financially. It's your role to provide properly. Don't you understand that? That's right. Harry is trying hard to be a good son. You should contribute properly to the living expenses and give money without fuss when Harry is short. That's the proper behavior for a wife. I was completely drained and couldn't even muster the energy to argue back. I just waited for this absurd lecture to end. Harry was smirking at me, probably thinking I deserved the scolding from his parents. After expressing their thoughts, the in-laws left at 11 p.m. Immediately, I confronted my husband. What's this all about? Why is it suddenly taken for granted that I should be sending money to your parents? Hey! My parents came all the way here to educate you? Are you dumb? Don't you get it yet? Education? His rationale was as bizarre as his parents. I felt nothing but emptiness at our differing viewpoints. Did you listen to what my mom said? Keep this up, and you'll be dumped by me. Is that what you want? Dumping me, what are you talking about? Look at this. You're so stubborn, I had to bring this. Saying so, Harry shoved divorce papers in my face. He was actually threatening me with divorce, thinking I would be afraid. The saying, like father, like son, was proving true. I started to ponder how to escape this marital life. The divorce papers in my husband's hands. This is my chance. How can I make him sign those papers and thrust them at me? What's this? Just a threat, right? You don't really intend to divorce. It's not a threat. I'm serious. Lies. You wouldn't dare file for divorce, you couldn't show your face in society. You're not serious. I retorted mockingly to my husband. His face turned red rapidly, and he began to shout. Think it's a threat? Look at this. Trying to silence my defiance, he grabbed a pen. Stop! What are you doing? As I screamed for him to stop, he signed the divorce papers with a laugh. See how serious I am? If you don't want to be dumped by me, you better listen. How could you do something so awful? Oh! After throwing the divorce papers at me, who was faking tears, he stormed out of the room. I immediately signed my part of the divorce papers and submitted them to the city hall the next day. After finalizing the divorce, I continued my job as if nothing had happened while looking for a new place to live. I decided to buy a condo suitable for a single person, convenient for commuting and shopping. And secretly, I completed the termination process for my current apartment. Now, I could leave whenever I wanted. I thought I just needed to endure a little longer. However, I was unaware that the attacks from my husband and in-laws were secretly progressing. It became clear the day I went shopping for the new life I planned. That day, I went out to buy appliances needed for my new home. I was excited about making a big purchase for the first time in a long while. Let's go on a shopping spree. Then, my phone rang. It was my credit card company. Um, we've noticed some suspicious activities on your credit card and wanted to inform you. There has been a high volume of transactions. Is there any issue? Is your card securely in your possession? I hurriedly checked my wallet. And there, my credit card was missing. This is terrible. My card is gone. This is serious. You've already exceeded your credit limit this month, and there have been multiple attempts to use the card even after it was maxed out, hence the call. It's been about $40,000. I immediately blocked the card, but it was too late. I checked the purchase history on my phone. Then, I saw charges for spa trips, luxury hotels, theater tickets, and premium seats on tourist trains, 
clearly, the tastes of my in-laws. I felt dizzy. And what infuriated me more was that they had settled the payments individually. Normally, high-value transactions on a credit card would prompt a verification call, allowing the detection of unauthorized use. But they split the payments to make them smaller. This was unforgivable. They must have used my card for online shopping. How dare they use the savings I worked so hard for. I would never forgive them. I immediately called the police and reported the card as stolen. And then, I prepared to retaliate against my husband. That night, when my husband came home, I confronted him. Hey, Harry. You stole my credit card, didn't you? Huh? Got busted, huh? Funny, mom just called saying she couldn't use the card. What? Your mom has my credit card? But she doesn't know the PIN, right? All you need is to sign with your name to use it. My husband calmly admitted that he had given our in-laws the credit card. Using my card knowing it's mine, that's terrible. I've already filed a theft report with the police. Police? Don't joke around. It's because you didn't give the money you were supposed to that I took the card. I'll explain everything to the police. Police won't intervene in family matters anyway. Harry, please return the money properly. $40,000. My husband was initially furious that I had filed a theft report, but he calmed down upon realizing the police wouldn't intervene in domestic issues. It's your fault for being stingy with the money I should get from you. I could take the card from your wallet without you even noticing, you're really stupid, it's laughable. He bragged about taking my credit card from my wallet. I told my parents to use all the money to make you reflect. Acting all high and mighty just because you have a little savings. But that was money I saved before we got married. Yeah, my parents and I are going on a trip tomorrow. We'll enjoy luxury inns and gourmet food. I'm being a good son, right? Oh, the payment has already been taken from your credit card. Thanks. While trembling with anger, I gripped the voice recorder in my pocket. Actually, I had bought the voice recorder before talking to Harry and recorded our entire conversation. The next day, my husband and in-laws went on their trip. During that time, I moved into the apartment I had arranged. And I had already completed the handover of the current apartment. I sent my husband's belongings, timed with their return from the trip, to his parents' house as a collect shipment. At the same time, I took the voice recorder with our conversation to consult the police and a lawyer. I decided to proceed with a claim for compensation. A few days later, my husband and in-laws returned from their trip. Naturally, my husband couldn't enter the apartment, and his parents were billed for the shipping costs of their son's belongings. Immediately, I received an angry call from my husband. Hey! What's the meaning of this? I can't get into the apartment. Is this your doing? Oh, my ex-husband Harry, what's the matter? Ex-husband? Yes, we've been divorced for a while now. The divorce papers you signed that day, I filed them. And about the theft of my credit card, you'll be compensating for that. Divorce? Why? The fact that Harry can't understand why we divorced is beyond me. From now on, please communicate through my lawyer. And don't contact me anymore. I hung up the phone and blocked my husband's number. Afterwards, I retrieved the $40,000 and the compensation. Now, I live peacefully in my new apartment. My husband was interrogated by the police for the credit card theft, but it seemed he got off with just a stern warning since it was a domestic issue. Still, he was utterly scared and never approached me again. My in-laws continued their lavish lifestyle, relying on their son. Thanks to that, all three of them are now drowning in debt, and my mother-in-law has started working part-time. Initially, they tried to demand money from me, but after my lawyer warned my in-laws, the call stopped abruptly. It was a short marriage, but I had to reflect on my poor judgment of character. Now, I'm focusing on my job and thinking about how to make amends to my parents who I worried, 